So Disney's upper-level executives, they've been playing a dangerous game as of late. They've been trying to placate a certain type of mob. You know, they've been feeding certain actresses to them. They've been going out, changing up movies and on. The problem is this. Sooner or later, you don't have any more actors or actresses to stoke the fires. And even if you did, it doesn't work out anymore. And how many movies can you change up before that doesn't work anymore? Now, sooner or later, that mob, they're going to aim at the company itself. You can see that pop up time and again, too, in articles just like this. When Disneyland reopens, so we're talking about reopening after a year of problems, it's going to have even more of a what type of problem? It's going to have a privilege problem. That's right. The company itself is being aimed at because it's going to increase prices. So hey there, to all you fine, fine folks, by the way. Now, as far as this topic is concerned, this is the person that is writing this article. This is exactly what they have to say. Quote, From the top tier single day tickets to the more expensive annual passes, hashtag Disneyland is likely on its way to becoming a more expensive experience. And oh yeah, it definitely is. They're going to pass the last year's prices directly on to the consumer. While it's easy to say that Disneyland is just a place for privileged people anyway, there are so many loyal fans who aren't wealthy. And that's a problem with consumers by the way. If you think that Disneyland is your friend, if you think that you want to be a loyal fan to Disney and they're somehow going to reward you, think again. They don't care about you. They care about your money, but they're not going to reward you for being a quote-unquote loyal fan. So yeah, quit shoving money in their freaking pockets. Removing monthly payment for annual passes when they come back is currently an option on the table, but those payment plans are what let many lower-income families families afford to go. Now, here's an idea that maybe, just maybe some people won't like, but I'm going to say it anyway. Maybe if you have to go out, you have to make monthly installments to Disney, you are living beyond your means. I know some people might not like that statement, but I'm saying that as someone that has never been to Disneyland with my kids. In fact, I've only been to Disney one time, and that was on someone else's buck. They invited our family way back when. We've never been able to afford that ourselves. And besides, look at this next statement here. Maybe Disney doesn't appreciate you anyway. You know, because again, they like your money. But if you're one of those plebs that can't spend enough, well, quote, those who support, quote unquote, more exclusive annual passes say that pass holders have been causing overcrowding and that having fewer than the estimated 1 million current APs or annual passes will make for a better park experience. You know what I love about the media, by the way? They are shills when it comes down to it. They can make statements telling you plebs not wanted. You people that have to afford things on an installment plan, yeah, we want a better quality of folks. And at the same time, they're saying, but for some people, you know what? You can't put a price on magic. I can. That price, by the way, that would be my dignity. If a company told me they don't want my money, I'd take my money elsewhere. See, here's the thing about Disney. A lot of people don't understand. Disney, they have a lot of assets, but as far as profitable assets, are concerned, yeah, parks and recreations, that was the thing. They would make them tens of billions of dollars annually. When they were shut down, that money, oh man, when you look at the losses there, it is mind-boggling. You see the numbers in front of you here, for example, a $3.5 billion hit, that was for three months. They were losing over a billion dollars a month because of that. So when they go on, of course, they're going to pass that on to consumers. And you know what consumers they're going to pass that money on to? The ones that think they can't put a price tag on magic. Because of course you can. Of course you can put a price tag on that indeed. Now, what's amazing to me when I look at this stuff, too, is no matter how much insult is heaped on certain people, again, can't put a price on magic. They want those monthly installments back, even though Disney is telling you, again, they want people that are going to go in and they're going to pay more money. Disney's CEO, Bob Chapek, indicating that they will be likely more expensive. He has described the company as currently, quote-unquote, recasting our annual pass program at Disney and reconsidering considering the overwhelming demand we have relative to supply, aka you're crowding up the park, 
and we want people that'll actually spend. Like I was saying before, it's interesting to see people wake up to the idea that Disney's a corporation. Mickey Mouse, he's not your buddy. That's effective branding. It looks friendly, but at the end of the day, you're not talking about a company that likes you in any way, shape, or form. They just like what's inside of your wallet. And those people with those passes, yeah, they don't like them that much. Why? The season pass holder is the quote-unquote smartest visitor to the parks. Dennis Spiegel, founder and CEO of International Theme Park Services, a global theme park consultancy, they told this place that's writing the article. They know when to come, when periods to avoid, how to, how to hit it at the right exact time of the day, weekend, weekday. Those people, he said, gobbled up capacity as annual passes became more easily attainable. Pass holders, he said, didn't spend as much. They'd eat before they got there, they'd eat after they leave, and a lot of them, they just ride rides. So basically, you're only coming to the place, you're coming to have fun, yeah, you're not the type of people these places want. If you don't understand that, by the way, well, you haven't been looking at this as corporate theme park. You've been looking at it as, well, it's supposed to be fun for us all. No, it's supposed to make them money, hand over fist. Now, like I mentioned at the beginning, the mob, how do they work into this? Well, again, they don't talk about this as business practice. They talk about this as privilege. Let's read through this. Stopping monthly payments will help thin the crowd but thinning the crowd by pricing people out isn't a good look for the company. That's not a good look for you, Disney. When he dreamed up the park, Walt Disney envisioned it as, quote, a great, great playground for the children and families of America, not as a place families would need to open up a new credit card to afford. Increasing prices, Disney's problem of privilege will become even worse. In short, what is long touted itself as the happiest place on earth is transitioning into the happiest place on earth as long as you can afford it. I think Disneyland is going to come out of this in the short term with maybe a couple of stumbles, but long term, I think it's going to benefit ultimately the guest that person said they were talking to. He meant smaller crowds, shorter lines, and better overall park experience. It's going to certainly benefit the park, but I think the guest is going to win in this as well. But which guest? Huh, what guest? What guest indeed? I wonder what they're trying to say with this picture. Man, this is the enigma for the ages, right? But anyway, when I look at this stuff, like I said, this is brought about by Disney's own design. They decided to go out. They decided to placate a mob, just like many other companies. You know, Disney's not alone in this, but Disney has been a front runner. They've been trying to placate that mob at every turn. And you know what? Sooner or later, that's going to backfire. They've traded in quite a few customers, in fact, telling you those customers, they weren't desirables. Well, look at who else is undesirable. Isn't that fascinating? It's not just because of politics like they've been trying to sell you. It's because of money. And well, how long before that gets called ist, that gets called phobic? How long before those very people, they've been saying those are the people we want, how long before they turn on them and they try to burn them down? I mean, they're already trying, it looks like. But yeah, let's see how that plays out. But anyway, let me know what you think about this stuff, and as always, appreciate the heck out of you. You make this stuff possible. You make all of this work, in fact. But anyway, let me know what you think about that. If you want to help out the channel, there are links in the description. And as always, like I said, appreciate you, and I'm going to end here. Thank you.